Are the Usos one of the best tag teams ever? Yes. Yes, they are. In ring, they proved that long ago, and they've used the last couple of years to finish that puzzle. Jimmy and Jay are great. Like all things in life and wrestling, there have to be ups and downs, though. Sorry. So here's 10 things WWE wants you to forget about the Usos. Number 10, who Jimmy's wife is. Now, that wording is slightly unfair, but it does tie in because, yeah... Jimmy Uso's wife is none other than Naomi, now Trinity. We all know that her and Sasha Banks walked out on WWE after falling out with management, and if you do cast your mind back, yep, Naomi was the manager for the Usos in 2014. That kind of happened again in 2019 as she was back to tell Mandy Rose to stop hitting on her husband, which brings us to the modern day, because man, something was brewing. For you see, in some interviews, Jimbo started to mention that sure, maybe Naomi could be the next person to join the bloodline, and then she left the company. Whoops. So if that was part of the plan, WWE has now gone out of their way to try and make you forget, because it ain't happening. Also, let's face it, the powers that be want all of this gone from your mind. The whole situation sounded awfully mishandled. Number nine, Jimmy Uso on commentary. In 2020, Jimmy was injured. We all remember this is when Jay got his first singles push, and it was good. There was something here that we didn't realize. Five years prior to this, though, the roles had been reversed, and I suppose because the Usos were still finding their way, WWE decided to put James on commentary. This wasn't for one match either. It was a pretty good stint. Now, I thought it was hilarious because Jimmy was just having the time of his life, but quite clearly, this isn't what WWE wanted, and you could see and feel it. I would guess that somebody was yelling into his ear a lot. Honestly, though, based on this, today we should let Jim run wild as a singles guy, but again, 2015 was a very different time, and they just weren't seen that way, although I think very, very soon we may finally get it. Number eight, the jump back to NXT. WWE didn't know what they had when the Usos debuted. At the same time, Jimmy and Jay were still figuring it all out, and we've seen this a lot. It's called growing as a wrestler. Their first feud was with the Hart Dynasty, which was okay at best, but all of a sudden the twins were shifted to NXT, where that program was a game show. And yes, you heard that right. It meant they would mentor some rookies while still appearing on Raw and SmackDown. But then in 2012, this became the proper developmental brand, with the decision being made that the Usos needed more experience. It seemed wild. The thing is, when you do turn the clock back, this was like the right call, because look at what happened in the end. It's not like they fell off a cliff. They wound up main eventing WrestleMania. What was mad is that around this time, they kept losing to the Ascension and the primetime players, two teams, that aren't even around anymore. Number seven, the pre-show specialists. WWE doesn't really ram matches onto a pre-show anymore, but there was a period where they absolutely loved it. Apparently, they also thought Jimmy and Jay would benefit from such things. Because before the bloodline existed, the Usos had 60 matches on premium live events, with 15 of those coming before the official start time. The real kicker with this is that some of these were at WrestleMania, so let's be honest. Here, at the grandest stage of them all, Vince McMahon didn't think they were worthy of a main card spot sure you've got to earn your stripes but still i would guess a large reason for this is due to vince's dislike for tag team wrestling which still doesn't make any sense especially as that's been long documented and it's crazy i mean it's the simplest way to break up a show and when done right it is wonderful if you really do want to get the chat going though the new day were actually only on five pre-shows but this is where i check out and what the comment section is for see ya number six jimmy's title match when roman reigns became the universal champion his first challenger was jay uso we all remember this it was great jimmy had a huge say in the results as during the first clash he threw in the towel to save his brother and in the second he got attacked by roman forcing jay to give in that was pretty damn good storytelling. While this could change at some point, though, and maybe very soon after you hear this, we've never got Reigns versus Jimmy in a championship match. It seemed weird back then as Jimbo would not fall in line, and then all of a sudden he just did, and today there's even more reason. He booted the tribal chief in the skull. As of me speaking, it does feel like the twins are finally moving away from the bloodline arc to do their own feud, which I love, but I do feel like this is a missed opportunity. Everybody in the line of blood should have got a crack against Roman. Hopefully I'm just getting ahead of myself. It does feel important. Number five, that feud with the revival. You wouldn't be able to get away with this now. We've done so much good work, and yet this kind of madness would undo it. But when the Usos and the revival finally came face to face, Vince McMahon decided that silliness was the name of the game. I'm not sure that it worked, and I flubbin' love goofy wrestling. All you had to do was give them some microphones and let them wrestle, but instead, we chose Usi Hot 
and once again, your ears do not deceive you. If you weren't around for this too, it's exactly as it sounds. Jimmy and Jay snuck into Dash and Dawson's locker room, infected their things with a cream, which meant the Revival's groins started to boil over. I don't know how else to say it. It meant that now FTR had to act like their penises were on fire in the ring, although seriously, fair play to them. They accepted their role and they threw themselves into it. Now, I am the first person to back comedy in wrestling, but one, not when you have this on the table, and two, it wasn't funny at all. It was stupid. Number four, all that Total Diva nonsense. So I did like Total Divas. As soon as you accept that it's not reality TV, it is all scripted, you can just enjoy for what it is dumb fun. Two of the main characters were Jimmy and Naomi, to the point we even saw them have some sort of wedding in January 2014. All their friends and family were there because of course, except for one notable person, Rikishi, Jim's dad, Ruro. The story was that Papa Oost didn't support this coming together because Trinity wasn't of Samoan descent. And then as soon as the show was canned, they all come out and said, <laughs> we only did this for the series and everything is cool. So that is ridiculous. I mean, who on earth were they trying to fool? Number three, their debut was all right, which ain't the best word when you want to talk about a debut. It is quite strange because WWE is very good at introducing new talent from John Cena to Chris Jericho, but when it came to the Usos, it sort of just happened. Going down as the Hart Dynasty mucked around with Vladimir Kozlov, Jimmy J and Tamina, and don't you know there is nobody meaner, rushed the ring and took out the WWE Tag Team Champions. As Natalia was there too, they did a very impressive triple splash, but with silence from the fans and little hype commentary, this fell flat, almost intentionally so. The feeling was almost one of, who is this? And it's why today you never see it in the best debuts ever list weren't even given a chance. Seeing what the Usos have become today just proves that they were totally miscast here. It's all a learning curve and man, did we ever learn. Number two, main event Jey Uso. Jey Uso earned this nickname. When everything went nuts and Roman Reigns needed an opponent during the pandemic, his cousin stepped up and the feud was great totally transformed how some people saw the tag team specialists. The thing is, while they did go at it, Jay just lost over and over and over again. Yep. So while he made it to the top, he didn't get any success off the back of it as Roman just wrecked him. What does that sound like? And look, the storytelling was ace, so who really cares? But don't act like WWE doesn't want you to remember this when you've got Jay shouting at the head of the table that he's main event Jay. Because yeah, he is, but his record is also 0-3. Whoops. I suppose you did need to do it this way to make the whole thing work, but if you did start watching WWE in 2023 and went back to this period, you may be a little bit shocked that this is what we were referring to. Number one, trouble with the law. So I do not like commenting on such things. A human's personal demons can be triggered by many events and addiction is a terrible thing. It can consume lives. Sadly, Jimmy Uso has been in trouble with the law four times since 2012, and a lot of these have been drink driving incidents. He's been pulled over by the police too, and of course, if the worst had happened, and it didn't, innocent bystanders could have been caught up in this. A really bad situation came out in 2019 where Jim did not take kindly to this and wanted to fight the cops, leading to one officer pulling out a taser to calm him down. Sheesh. This was diffused and Jimmy got arrested, but still, you just don't want it. I'm not sure if the Usos ever got internally disciplined by WWE for these issues, but it did stop them entering Canada for a while. It's not exactly ideal when your job is a traveling pro wrestler. I just really do hope he's in a better place today and we don't have any more of these incidents. Do not forget that your mental health is very important. Know of anything else that WWE wants us to forget about the Usos? Make sure you let us know in the comments below before you like the video, share the video, and hey, why not subscribe? Then you can head over to whatculture.com where you can read articles like this with your eyes and your ears if you want to try that. Make sure you follow us on social media at WhatCultureWWE and Simon316. And of course, there'll be more videos for you to check out. Please do. My name is Simon for What Culture. Thank you very much for joining me as always. I hope you have a tremendous day. You're in my heart and you're in my soul, which is really creepy. Take care. Goodbye.